Force for Regis. Brilliant ball from Regis to Mortimer. He can make it 2 2 here. Fine save, but Atkinson's there. And it's just the return that David Atkinson would have dreamed of. It's Villa's turn to come on the charge, and Atkinson, it's going to be one against one here. Chris Woods waits, and it's squared, squared for Staunton. And Steve Staunton strikes what might well prove to be a winner for Villa. Three Villa new boys scoring on their debut, but Big Ron wasn't going to outstay his welcome. Congratulations, fair result. Yes. Tottenham's Gary Lineker has already established himself as one of the world's top finishers with his performances in the last two World Cups. Whether it be in the second division with Leicester City, in the first with Everton, or in the Spanish league with Barcelona, Lineker has found the net consistently wherever he's played. Approaching his 31st birthday, he soon dispelled any suggestion that he'd lost a yard of pace with 11 goals in seven league games, including these four against Wimbledon. He also continued his inevitable progress towards Bobby Charlton's scoring record for England with regular international goals. Lineker's old England partner, Peter Beardsley, had been a victim of the shake-up at Anfield, but found a new home at nearby Goodison Park. He arrived back at Anfield wearing Everton blue, but still received a massive ovation. The £1 million he cost Howard Kendall was proving money well spent, and Beardsley soon rediscovered his scoring touch. Striker moving away from Goodison was finding a new lease of life with newly promoted Oldham Athletic. Graham Sharp was helping the second division champions find their feet in their first season in the top flight for 69 years. Marshall, I think, called for that for Richard to leave it. Sharp! 1-1. One, one. And you sense the goal was coming. Ian Wright became Arsenal's most expensive signing when George Graham paid two and a half million pounds for the unsettled Crystal Palace attacker. Wright's response? A hat-trick on his league debut against Southampton. Wright's signing came just too late for him to qualify to play in the European Cup for the Gunners. What would George Graham have given to have had this kind of finishing as his side made an early exit against Benfica. Unfortunately for George, Wright's goal-scoring exploits were limited to the league and domestic cup competitions. Another early season move saw Vinnie Jones leave Sheffield United and return to the capital with Chelsea for £575,000. The great midfield motivator soon became a favourite at Stamford Bridge and was certainly playing to the gallery. The referees weren't always having such a good time. In Nottingham, Terry Lunt got in the way of Forest keeper Mark Crossley's clearance and the unfortunate Mr Lunt was out for the count. Agony of a different kind for Arsenal's Lee Dixon. Against Coventry City, he conjured up probably the most spectacular goal of his career. Unfortunately, at the wrong end. Definitely the early front-runner for own goal of the season. At the right end of the pitch, the real marksman was showing how it should be done.
For just 250, you can get a dis October started badly for Leeds and for John Salako of Crystal Palace. At Selhurst Park, the young England star fell awkwardly after this apparently innocuous challenge. Salako was carried from the field with the same knee injury that ruined Paul Gascoigne's season and he was out for a year. Small consolation for Steve Koppel then, as Palace inflicted a first league defeat on Leeds United with a goal from Mark Bright. Manchester United's first defeat was soon to follow. Wednesday doing well to win it back immediately. Palmer retrieved the situation. Sets Worthington going. The ball into the middle lane for Hurst. Head! Absolutely brilliant. Oh no, that's a dreadful mistake and it's given an equaliser to Brian McClare. I said oh no because Paul Warhurst just did not see the lurking menace of Brian McClare. Hurst losing out to Parker and it was a fair challenge. Oh and here's McClare inside the area. Giggs teeing up Robson. Brian Robson can make it 2-1. He's still got a chance. Oh and it's going into the net. Is it? What an extraordinary mess. It's 2-1 to Manchester United, and have you ever seen a sloppier goal than that? It was quite bizarre, and Giggs there, Robson on the left foot, couldn't force it through, it struck Palmer. Then it was Nielsen who diverted it back inside of the upright, a miskick by poor old Warhurst again, and McClare's tap-in makes it 2-1 to United. Corner for Sheridan to take. Wednesday have got only three players, three outfield players outside the penalty area. Here is one of them, Roland Nielsen, who whacks it back in. Must be a chance here. Jensen! 2-2! Two -two. And Nigel Jensen has got his first league goal since joining Wednesday from Nottingham Forest. Can Wednesday get anything from this? Yes, they can! It's 3-2! And he has done it! And Nigel Jensen, it's turning into a real birthday for him. That meant that Leeds had the chance to go top of Division 1 for the first time since 1974. They managed it, but only just a Brian Kilkline own goal, giving them a narrow victory over Oldham. In November, Alex Ferguson became the first manager to get his hands on a trophy. A 1-0 win over Red Star Belgrade brought him the European Super Cup. The following weekend at Old Trafford, it was packed to the rafters as the biggest crowd of the season, 47,000, turned out for their match against West Ham United. Claire who takes them on this time. Kanchelskis coming infield and leaving room for McClare to go on. Oh, and it's Giggs! What a volley! Oh, Gale wanting time that Hughes wasn't going to give him. Giggs is tearing through the middle. Can he find the shot? He finds the back heel for Kanchelkis. Robson makes sure. And West Ham hang their heads. Knocked in his tracks by Steve Bruce. Quick free kick for West Ham. McAvenny. It's 2-1. Manchester United caught out. The next day, Leeds United faced Aston Villa, needing a win at Villa Park to return to the top. Good looking cross, Chapman's header, goal the save, but it's Wallace who follows up, and it's a goal for Leeds United. White has come forward to the near post.